Hello, Max Morgan, Chairman of People Authorized, and uh, we have a surprise uh, guest uh, who unfortunately is unable to stay in town to attend in person the MP's 2023 summit at Trump National Golf Club at Bedminster, but nevertheless he wanted to give an important message to the audience and the attendees representing the different countries and different uh, members uh, who um, are in line with the Abrahamic Accord and promoting peace on the principles of uh, the Abrahamic Accord in uh, the entire world, not just in the Middle East. And we're with uh, Mr. Rob Ross, or as he pronounced it, Rob Ross, <laughs> a member of the European Parliament from the Netherlands. And uh, I want to say thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to talk with you and share your message to our attendees. We would have loved to keep you in town and uh, have you meet all the delegation in person and uh, be a keynote speaker during the event. But we will uh, host the next one in June and we'll love to um, host you in the next one as well. Okay, well, it's my pleasure. Thank you so much. Uh, our foundation is uh, founded to promote peace in the world uh, in the world and the Middle East specifically based on prosperity and based on uh, alignment of people who really want to live in peace and exchange culture, tourism, interfaith, and primarily business deals, which will, will close the gaps between uh, non-traditional partners. Uh, how do you feel about initially the Abrahamic Accord um, signature with uh, the accomplishment and the players that reached that agreement? Yeah, that was a very great moment, a breakthrough. Uh, for me, it was, I was really happy with that because uh, yeah, <laughs> peace is the most important thing because um, the opposite and war is bringing so much trouble for people and um, we are living on this planet together and we should do it together. So this Abram Accord, that was really a breakthrough and it was uh, a huge um, achievement of, of uh, President Donald Trump. For me, it was so huge that I I tried to nominate him for the Nobel Peace Prize uh, via the European Parliament, yeah. and uh, I needed support from my MEP colleagues in uh, in Brussels. But unfortunately, they didn't support it. But um, yeah, I did my best because I really believed in it, and it, it was really an amazing result. Yeah, absolutely, and I agree with you. I'm glad you brought this up because I feel the same way. I met with President Trump several times and uh, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, and the one thing that I mentioned to them that uh, the accomplishment that they have achieved together with the Abraham Accord uh, has been something that almost every president uh, in the United States previously and other world leaders have been talking about but ne never were able to accomplish. Uh, yet the achievement was uh, ignored or downplayed uh, in the media and did not receive the recognition, uh, despite uh, bringing countries like you know Israel and United Arab Emirates uh, and Bahrain and countries uh, that uh, are now uh, exchanging full diplomatic um, uh, representation and business and travel and culture and everything. Um, yet uh, for whatever reason, uh, in their mind, um, did not see that achievement. Uh, is worth mentioning uh, for at least President Trump. Uh, so we were um, talking about that and our idea, at least uh, we would love to support your initiative if we can uh, and uh, join our forces to your, to our voice to your voice to uh, uh, nominate him. But on our side, we're at least recognizing him during MPs 2023 for uh, that achievement. Uh, what can, you say to uh, American citizens who de really did not know the importance of the Abraham Accord that was achieved? I don't think, um, not, not only the American citizens, but also the citizens in, in, uh, in the rest of the world, uh, but especially also in, in Europe, because the problem is if, if Donald Trump Say said everything, uh, anything. It, it, they, um, they downplayed all the things he had done. 
I think he achieved a lot of things for the United States, also uh, during uh, on, on economical basis. Um, it's, it's, it was just not fair, and especially um, the Democrats here in the United States and also the left in in um, in Europe. They, they didn't give, give the credits President Trump deserved at that time. And it's time to reconsider that, to look back. Um, it was amazing, it is amazing, and I hope uh, more countries will contribute to this Abraham Accords, um, that we have peace in the Middle East. It, it is so important also for Europe. We have so many migrants coming to Europe because they're living in terrible situations over there and if the world is a better place for these people in their own region it's a better place for the rest of the world so it, it is very important yes I agree with you and this is where we're trying to accomplish with in peace 2023 is really to encourage more sustainable developments in these countries uh, to uh, deliver uh, peace and prosperity where people can live in their own countries not have to face wars and migrations and, and refugees and this is exactly what what's happening now um, with the war in Ukraine you know um, the possible break of war with China and Taiwan uh, Iran and you know its neighbors uh, we didn't have to worry about all of that during uh, the time the President Trump was signing the Abraham Accord and actually I think diffused uh, an amount of war that could have you know, ignited in the Middle East, especially after the Arab Spring, uh, the outcome of um, the failed policies of the previous administration. Um, we uh, would encourage uh, more people on the grassroots level, but we would like to also uh, engage with diplomacy, uh, whether with the European Union or the United Nations or other countries, to encourage more delegations, more uh, governments to consider uh, joining the Abraham Accord principles or signing similar accords yes, yes. that uh, establish peace in, in those regions. Uh, what, what can um, ordinary people or NGOs or activists do to pressure their governments to um, follow similar approach to promote peace rather than war and uh, to talk uh, with each other and, and sign treaties in order to bring prosperity to their people. Uh, how can we bridge that between the grassroots and the governments of the different countries to follow that model? I think what's, what is very important is to, to bring the real message to the people because um, they have not really a, a, a good idea of what's going on. Uh, for example, I'm from the Netherlands. If we look at the media there, President Trump was always bashed, and everything he did was it, it doesn't matter if it's good, if it's bad, everything uh, was, was bashed. And just because of who he is, President Donald Trump, it's not about what he said, what he had accomplished, what he had done, just about him. And this is not fair, and this is, it, it doesn't help the world. And I hope one day also the left governments will recognize this and, 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 and fight for real peace, not the peace that they Present. invented, presented, but the peace that there is no matter who did it. Great, I, I agree with you, uh, and uh, I, I you know, join my, my uh, voice to yours and everybody else that we hope people see the reality, see the truth, and enough of the falsehood uh, that uh, has not delivered any real or sustainable peace. Uh, and apparently there are some uh, hidden agendas also that are um, pushing uh, the conflicts uh, to uh, continue for, for much longer. I want to thank you so much and uh, we'll uh, hope uh, our audience during the conference uh, uh, forgive us for uh, not bringing you in person, <laughs> but uh, we'll, uh, we'll uh, align for the next one to make sure that we uh, have the honor to host you. Okay, thank you so much. And, uh, I'm sorry.